Okay. But that was a very, um, I'll probably have to do the breathing technique to get rid of that because it, it brings up a lot of anxious, a lot of hurt feelings still to this day. So I don't think I answered your question about getting out the, um, I take people where they're at. And I'm not going to, you know, talk about spontaneous order to people who don't know what those two words mean. Wow, okay, I'm not on social media. I've never been on Twitter. Okay, I mean, I don't have my own Twitter account. I read other Twitter things, but thank God I'm not on Twitter. And I thank God, by the way, that I, I didn't win that election because um, I think I wouldn't have come to this point. I'm a better person for going through that process and learning from it and talking to you about it and then able to go forward and do something different. So maybe I will get involved. My, my colleague is involved in, in social media quite a bit. So maybe we'll do that, but you're right. I didn't even use those words, but they're on the text of the slides, which is connect in real world time, not in virtual time. That's where you need to be able to touch somebody and hold that point of view. So keeping your attention on looking for opportunities to connect with people physically. You will find them in the line at the coffee shop. You will find those opportunities uh, when you're just walking down the street and you smile at somebody. The way that I would do that kind of uh, work is to have ready um, statements to say to somebody. You know, you know, you're smart enough to know that we can't all have free education. I know that. You know, or, and see in them the goodness that you want to see in you. So that kind of connection can't be beat on the social media. I agree with you all about what the media is doing, and especially with the intel that's behind it. So, uh, the whole media structure is is gone now. I don't know why we haven't seen something come up competitively uh, to break it. I mean, it's it's rising slowly, but it's not taking root. So we need to have a counterbalance to it. Yes. I was just thinking about Game of Thrones on the way up. No, I mean, it's a phrase that hurts, but what does it mean? Winter is coming means that we're at a tipping point here in terms of the amount of power the socialists have. Um, I think it's overstated if you read it from the media. I have a class of about uh, 80 students, principal freshman students, and I have them do a comparative analysis of, of market systems and socialist systems, and they have to include information about Venezuela. None of them have heard anything about Venezuela. But in the end, when they're doing this comparison, they've all come down on the market side with all its flaws and everything else, and we can structure it so they consider flaws. My goal is that they come out to think. I do not want them to think about markets because they think I'm going to give them a better grade. Now, matter of fact, if they can't support their arguments and they just try to pander to me, I'll give them a lower grade. Now, I, my obligation as a teacher is to teach people to think. And I just thought it was very descriptive in my part to say, winter is coming. I think we're in for a battle. And the battle is not for what they're distracting us on. It's not for the Senate seats and the Congress seats. It's for the hearts and minds of everybody around us. And if we lose sight of that, we lose the battle. You touched on this a little bit with the last question, um, but I do hear a lot of uh, socialist people you know, um, uh, compare socialist programs here to socialist programs in uh, Denmark and, uh, uh, and uh, across Scandinavia, but they don't mention Venezuela. Um, my question is, um, uh, what do we do to, to kind of uh, shed some light on uh, 
how socialist programs are funded uh, in those countries, and uh, as an economist, uh, what do you think about uh, something like that ever taking root here? Uh, something like the socialist system taking root here? It, it kind of seems like that's what they're after. <laughs> uh, I think it's here. If you look at California's, um, they've lost the middle class in California. They have a one party system for over 30 plus years. And uh, we rank highest in the, the nation in poverty. Those three statistics no middle class, very uh, one party system, and a very high uh, poor level that describes any socialist country around. Okay? And also include the incomes of the top. Uh, political party people, that's what you have. This is it. We've got it now. And I know it because of the collaborative way in which everybody is shutting down their voice. So a friend of mine in Venezuela very early on when Hubert Chavez started his uh, unveiling of his socialist self. He told me, Lydia, we never elected a dictator. That was a squeaky word. We got one. And it's easier to become a dictator, easier than we think. He said, we never elected a dictator. And the phone calls have become begun. What phone calls? In the middle of the night, you get a call. The person says to you, we know what you said about our president, Chavez. Don't go to work tomorrow. You've lost your job. You hang up. You, what, what, what did I say? What do you mean I don't have a job? Oh my god, I got the call. And that little piece of information that you got punished for something you said about somebody spreads throughout you know, the community. And then everybody stops talking to each other because they don't know who said it to whom. To get it in front, well, it's all made up, right? But you can't be trusting that. You can't be sure that, you know, Hugo Chavez didn't just pick some poor sap and say, you know, call him and tell him he said something bad about me. Let it spread. But that's what happened in every single socialist country. The biggest threat to socialism is our iPhone, our communication with each other. It lowers the organizational cost that used to make the population important to fight any kind of dictator. But now we have organizational skills. Go to this street. No, there's tear gas coming here. Go to that street. You know, we have organizational skills that in Iran, that's what they've been using to to thwart the kind of elite socialism that we're seeing. So I don't I don't remember what the question was anymore, but I think I answered some of it. Okay, we just have time for one more. Right. So this is more of a comment than a question, but I, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it, um, especially uh, being that you are in the Republican Party, because I think a lot of Republicans uh, could stand to think about this. Um, two things about uh, socialism. I used to think socialism was the problem, or at least one serious problem. And I realized it's really the aggression. Um, socialism is fine when it's on a voluntary level. Most families operate on the basis of each according to his ability, to each according to his need. It's when they try to impose it on people through government that it becomes a problem, or forced on people through other institutions, but typically government. The second thing is that what's going on in this country, uh, largely, I, I think calling it socialism is giving it too much credit. Socialism is about taking from the rich and giving to the poor, redistributing wealth. You know, in theory, in practice, it ends up those in power take it for themselves, but in theory, it's about taking from the rich and giving to the poor. Well, they're taking from the poor and giving to the wealthy. The people in government are richer on average than people not in government, in what I call the voluntary sector in this country. Here in San Francisco, people are paying taxes you know, everybody pays taxes, and they're wrong, is wrong about this, not just 47%. We all pay taxes, whether it's indirectly, property tax, rent, tax. sales tax, exactly. There's people who are unemployed, living on the streets, thousands of people here in San Francisco living on the streets, paying taxes to support people in government earning six-figure salaries. That's not socialism. That's something a lot worse than socialism. Uh, I, I agree with everything you said. And if you put the word Republican in there, you know, I thought I could do some good for that party. They, they needed to uh, be uh, a little bit more introspective about what they were doing. So I picked them because I, my friend said, why don't you pick Democrat? 
I have a lot of friends on campus, and I didn't pick a Democrat. I probably would have won. That's what they all said. You could have won if you picked Democrat. I said, but I can't authentically be that. Okay, I know that Republicans have a big tent, and there's a little tiny corner of that where I fit. You may have heard there is a third choice. Yes, there is. There is. <laughs> I thought about it, but uh, I was too new to the whole thing. You're ready. ready. <laughs> so I think you guys have another speaker here. Uh, so. Let's give Lydia a big round of applause. Thank you for being here. Okay, and we're going to move on to uh, the next portion of our agenda, which is bylaws updates. And um, for those of you who are not members, this might not be very much fun. And for those of you who are members, this still might not be very much fun. <laughs>